Hi, my name is Christopher Blake, and I'm a student at Cabrini College. Today, I'm joined by a special guest, Borju Munoz, a Catholic Relief Service worker from, from Turkey who is currently working in Jerusalem. Borju, can you please explain to us your job title? I'm currently a project manager with Catholic Relief Services in Jerusalem in our Jerusalem West Bank and Gaza Country Program, and I've been working there for about two years now. Where did you go to study undergraduate school? I did my undergrad studies in Turkey at Bilkent University in Ankara, and I got my degree in international relations. And after you got your degree, you chose to go to master school, correct? That's right. I was interested in peace studies, and uh, I was admitted to uh, the Joan B. Kroc Institute of the University of Notre Dame's uh, International Peace Studies program. During your time uh, in your master's program, you had the opportunity to go to Cambodia with Catholic Relief Services. That's right. Um, as part of our studies, we had to do a field semester uh, abroad, and I chose to uh, be with Catholic Relief Services in Cambodia. And there I worked with uh, CRS's local partner, Youth for Peace, and did research with them, with uh, second and third generation gen genocide survivors in Cambodia on the transmission of the memory of genocide. Currently you are in Jerusalem with Catholic Relief Services. That's what are right. some of your job responsibilities there? Uh, as a program manager, I work with my colleagues in West Bank and mostly in Gaza on, on the design and expansion and evaluation of our projects focusing on youth development and education. I also have a small peace building assignment, which means that I get to participate also in the peace building integration into our development programs, in the design of reconciliation programs throughout the region. Can you please explain the ongoing situation in Gaza and the West Bank? Uh, Gaza especially is, uh, is going through a very hard time at the moment. It's a very special place. It's um, it's a small strip, about 25 miles long and 4 to 7 miles wide, and uh, it's got about uh, one and a half million uh, of people, and 80% uh, of its population is made up of refugees. Those refugees live in eight refugee camps throughout Gaza. It's one of the most densely populated, populated areas of the world. And uh, the situation in Gaza, unfortunately, has been going from bad to worse in the past two years that I have been there. Um, when I arrived in Palestine, uh, there had just been uh, elections in 2006, and Hamas had been elected for the government. And uh, the international community did not recognize their, uh, their authority, and they uh, put an international boycott on the Palestinian Authority, which, which meant that they cut all international aid to Palestine. Um, this further led to the division of the pal uh, political situation in, in Palestine and the, the conflict between the two leading parties, Fatah and Hamas, uh, grew and intensified to the point that they were, they were, they were fighting in the streets and in June of 2007, Hamas took over the whole of Gaza Strip. And um, as a result of that, Israel declared the Gaza Strip as hostile entity, and uh, they, um, they, put, they tightened the already strict closure around Gaza. Gaza has six crossing points through which uh, movements good, of goods and people are allowed, but since um, June 2007, this movement has been uh, very much restricted. Therefore, um, it, it's making the lives of people in Gaza are very difficult. Uh, make, making the lives of people in Gaza very difficult. Shall I say that again? <laughs> okay. Um, after declaring Gaza Strip hostile territory. The closures, the six closures that regulate the movement of goods and people in and out of Gaza have been very much tightened, and uh, this is making the lives of people in Gaza very difficult. Specifically, how are the young college-age students being affected? There are two big issues that affect their lives very much. The first one is the closure. 
which means that they can't really get out of Gaza. Around 60% of the youth we've been working with have never been outside of Gaza. They have relatives in Jerusalem, uh, relatives in, in the West Bank, but they've never been able to travel. Um, closure means that not a lot of raw materials and goods are coming in, and people uh, who have businesses in Gaza are not able to sell their products out, outside. So uh, employment uh, has become a, a big issue. Unemployment has become a very big issue. And um, uh, the breadwinners of, of uh, the households have lost their jobs. This has meant that their families has become uh, a lot poorer. And for university students, this might mean that they will not be able to pay their tuition fees anymore. It might also mean that they don't even have uh, money for, for transport to the university. Um, and uh, this makes their lives very difficult. Uh, closure also means that not all goods are coming in as they used to be. For example, for a long time, people didn't really get Coca-Cola or good chocolate or you know things that we like to have um, until you know the tunnels through Egypt were opened and, and they started getting those goods, but at higher prices, and not everybody's able to afford these things. Closure also means that there's not much fuel coming in, or diesel or cooking gas coming in. And this makes life incredibly difficult in Gaza. Um, the electricity generators who work on diesel, they're not a able to operate um, to their full capacity, so there's electricity shortages. Children uh, have to study maybe in the dark for several nights and then they have some more electricity. Um, there wasn't enough bread because there wasn't enough electricity to, to, um, ge to, to generate uh, the ovens, the, to, to work the ovens. And um, there isn't, um, the fuel is very scarce and therefore very expensive. Uh, the last time I was there, uh, people were talking about around 20 shekels, 25 shekels per liter, which is around $5. And who can afford that in Gaza? Um, public transport has therefore become very um, difficult, um, very scarce. Only a, a, a few number of uh, minibuses or service taxis are running, which makes it difficult for students to get to school, for people to go to work. So people are biking or walking. There are very few cars in the streets. Um, These people, the, the Palestinian people, are living with terrible circumstances. How do they find any light at the end of the tunnel? Is part of your job giving them hope? Uh, we try. We try hard. We at least try to give them space so that they can, they can uh, vent about their difficulties. They can come together with people across political or socioeconomic divides and they can sit, sit together and talk about issues that unite them. Um, but in terms of generating hope, um, that we find it hard because we're not, we feel that we're not really able to uh, make a difference in the larger issues that, that can bring about change mm -hmm. in the circumstances that, that they're faced with. In Gaza, only 9% of college-age students are actually attending universities. How will the nation continue to develop in the future with such a low rate in, in education? Um, well, education is, is, for Palestinians, is a very, very important pursuit. Uh, even in refugee camps, you will see that there are people with PhDs. Uh, young people try to apply for and get scholarships from abroad to study abroad. Sometimes the closure does not allow them to go out. Um, they, they, they try hard and they do their best to obtain education because they believe that that's, that's the only way that they can build up their country 
and, and achieve independence and, and, and prosper and build a good future for themselves. So a poor family in a refugee camp will do anything to save up money for their child, to go to school, to attend university. They will do anything. We're sitting here at Cabrini College in Radnor, Pennsylvania.